Hello everyone, welcome to MF Study Pros. Today we're going to be looking at the DSAT Math October Predictions. So these are a group of math problems that he thinks will be on the October SAT and we're going to be walking through it one by one. Alright, let's start. A company that produces only one type of item wants to estimate the percent of the items produced in a typical week that are defective. A random sample of 400 of the items produced in a certain week were tested. Based on the sample, it is estimated that 8.5% of all items produced by the company in a week are defective, with an associated margin of error of 2.73%. Based on the estimate and associated margin of error, which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about all items produced by the company during this week? Okay, so I don't think we'll actually have to do any math, just glancing at these questions real quick. So, 2.63 of all the items are defective. That is not it. 2.73, I'm sorry, is the margin of error, not the percent defective. B, it is plausible that between 5.77 and 11.23 of all the items are defective. That is correct. If you take the margin of error and you add or subtract it from the estimated amount, that's where you get the plausible area. We'll look at C and D real quick, but I know that B is right. C, and a half percent of all the items are defective. That's an estimate. Uh, this has nothing to do with an estimate. And also, while eight and a half is in the range, it's not the only range that is plausible. D, it is plausible that more than 11.23 of all the items are defective. That is incorrect as well because 2.73 plus 8.5, that will not reach more than, higher than 11.23. For example, 12% is way higher than these two added, so it's not plausible. Okay, let's look at two. A district school board in a certain state is proposing a change of the time for when school starts for all high school students in the district. A sample of 353 high school students was selected at random from all high school students in the district. The selected students were asked whether they approved of the proposed change and 300 students responded that they did not approve. Which of the following is the largest population to which the results of the survey can be generalized? All high school students in the district. So let's go back and read the question. A sample of 353 high school students was selected at random from all high school students in the district. So they are researching all high school students in the district. That can be generalized as them. So look, let's look at B, the 353 students who are surveyed. Yes, but that's very specific. That's not generalized at all. So it's not B. C, the 300 students who responded that they did not approve of the proposed change. Yes, but again, it's not generalized. That's very specific. D, all high school students in the state. Nope. Remember it said just in the district. So it's not asking about all the ones in the state. Okay, number three here. The figure shown is a right circular cylinder with a radius of R and a height of H. A second right circular cylinder not shown has a volume that is 567 times larger than the volume of the cylinder shown. Which of the following could represent the radius R in terms of R and H in terms of H of the second cylinder? So the new cylinder is just... Um, capital letters for the, the constants. We know that volume of a cylinder is pi r squared, so it is the area of the top of the circle times height. So we are looking to multiply the volume by 567 times. So let's just look real quick and run through each of these answers and see how much it actually multiplies it by. 
So A says 9 times the radius and 8 times the height. So the height will be 8 times as much and the radius will be 9 times as much, but it's squared. So this is 81 times 8. So let's pop over to Desmos. 81 times 8. That's 648 times. That is not what we're looking for. A is not right. Now let's do B. Again, B radius times 9 and height times 64. So honestly, before even going through with this whole thing, we already found out that A was higher than 576 and B is just going to be even higher because the radius is the same and it's just the height is getting multiplied by more. So we can kind of instantly cross off B as well. C, radius is 8 times as much, height is 9 times as much. So 8 squared, 64 times 9. Let's plug it into Desmos. 64 times 9, 576. That is what we're looking for. That is the correct answer. Real quick, I'll just do D, 64 times the radius, which will be 64 squared, and height 9 times. That will just be way too high. 64 squared is 4,096. So you don't even have to worry about the height. You can kind of just eyeball it and see that D is incorrect. Okay, let's move on to question 4. Question 4 says, on average, a certain tree grows 51 centimeters every M months. At this rate, which expression represents the number of centimeters on average a tree grows after every k years? So, if you're looking for the average, it will be the amount of centimeters grown over one year. So, if the tree grows 51 centimeters every m months, how much will that be in a year? So, pay attention to the units, months and years. So you would have to go into Desmos, or any calculator, or do it in your head, 51 times 12 months, because it grows 51 centimeters after 12 months, which is a year. And so you get 612 centimeters in one year. So now we can go back to the question and figure out what it's actually asking. At this rate, which expression represents the number of centimeters on average the tree grows after every k amount of years? So the answer would be D because 612 is the amount of centimeters it grows in one year. So after every year it grows k after every one year, it grows 612. So if it was one year, it would have grown 612 centimeters. That makes sense. Over M, because you put over the amount of months. And let's just plug it in. Let's just make sure this makes sense. So after two years, we'll plug it in. 612, two years over the amount of months of two years, which is 24, and we get 51, which again shows the average rate of growth. So D would be correct here. All right, question five. Two different digital SAT test takers estimated the percentage of all test takers who took the digital SAT on an iPad. They each selected a random sample of test takers at their center and record to whether the test takers were using an iPad to complete the exam or they were using something else. The results from each sample are shown in the table below. So sample A, percent of test takers using an iPad. Sample A had 
with a 1% margin of error, and sample B had 43% with a 4% margin of error. If the associated margin of error was calculated the same way for both samples, which of the following is most likely reason that the result for sample B had a larger margin of error? Okay, so before I even read the answers, I will say that a larger sample size, according to the law of large numbers, the more people you sample, the more accurate it will be. And this makes sense because the more people you sample, just in general, it accounts less for outliers, it just gets a bigger sample size, it gets you a better idea of what you're doing. So with that, let's look into the questions. Sample A included more test takers than sample B. So, B. Sample A had a low margin of error. They probably had a lot of people. Sample B had a higher margin of error. They probably had less people. So sample A included more test takers than sample B. That could look right to me. Sample B included more test takers than sample A. That doesn't look right to me. C, sample A has a greater percentage of test takers using an iPad than sample B. That has nothing to do with the amount of margin of error. Sample B was selected after sample A. This has nothing to do with the time. The time would not have anything to do with the margin of error as well. So A is correct. Okay, number six. An object speed is increasing at a rate of 12.1 meters per second squared. What is this rate in miles per minute squared, rounded to the nearest tenth? Okay, so this is a conversion problem. We have 12.1 meters per second squared. So this is a velocity. Um, it's increasing in velocity. This is a quadratic. Where this is just to visualize it a little better uh, per meter. Okay, so we would have to convert this 12 meters per second to miles per minute. Okay, so let's start by doing timesing it by one. So 1,609 meters is the same as one mile because we want one mile on the top it gives us that conversion and then these units will cancel out so then I will have 121 miles for every second squared what we have to do now is we have to convert the seconds into minutes so we have to convert the seconds to minutes. So obviously there is 60 seconds in a minute and we want to keep the minute squared so one minute squared. So 60 seconds squared is the same as 60 squared. So I could just do this. 3,600. Okay. So now we have to multiply these out. Okay. We can just do this on Desmos pretty quickly. So 12.1 over 1 times 1 over 16. 1 over 1609 times 3,600 over 1. And this gets our answer of 27.07. So we look at the answers. Obviously, we'll round to 27.1. OK. Now we've reached about halfway. I'm going to cut it here. And the part two of this video will come out soon. So interview. These are the DSAT Math October predictions. We did one through six. Go check out DSA Teach his channel. I'll link it in the description. I got it from his classroom, and his classroom is a super helpful resource that 
you can use to get things like this with the answer keys all on the bottom as well. Thank you.